Welcome to What is Truth, brought to you by the Southern New Mexico Church of God in Las Cruces, New Mexico. What is Truth is a weekly program which seeks to focus our attention on the truth of God's Word. Now, with this week's lesson, here's Pastor Meyer Stahl. Welcome to the program. You know, this secret rapture, uh, the born again and the secret rapture, and there's a lot of uh, stories out there. If you start out with a false premise, you will come, you, you'll come out with a false conclusion. So if you start out with a false premise and you try to prove it by the Bible, using the Bible to try to prove a false premise, you will just end up with a wrong conclusion. Now, what we're going to do today, my purpose today is to explain the secret rapture. It used to be called the secret rapture. Today, most people just say, when I'm raptured, or when the rapture comes, I'm going to heaven. The whole idea is you're going to heaven, Christ is going to rapture you away, you're going up to heaven during the great tribulation, three and one half year period. You won't have to go through that, and you'll be safe and sound way up there in heaven with Jesus Christ and God. Now, the question is, is it true or is it false? My purpose today is to explain the secret rapture and to show you it is a false doctrine and explain it to you from the Bible, from the words of Jesus Christ himself. Now, we're offering two very important booklets today. The first booklet is, Why Were You Born? And it says here at the bottom of the booklet, it says, Do you really know why you were born? Do you realize God has a purpose being worked out, I might add, for you? Most fail to understand that purpose Read this booklet, you will be surprised. Whenever you get any booklets, always read them along with your Bible. And the second is just, what do you mean, born again? And here it says, don't be too sure you know. Many religious people talk about being born again, yet they don't really know what Christ meant by those words. The truth is surprising. It's startling. Here, made so plain, you will understand. Just call the number on the screen. We'll, ha we'll send those booklets out to you for free. You can also have a DVD of this program for free. We have nothing to sell on the program. So, Let's go into it. Let's go into the Bible. Let's turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9. Let's look at it. 1 Thessalonians 5, and we're looking at verse 9. And here it says, For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also you do. So here's the point. God has not appointed us to wrath. That's very true. Which wrath, is he ta which wrath is Paul talking about? Is Paul talking about the wrath of Satan or the wrath of God? Certainly, we're not appointed to the wrath of God. 
But this tribulation is Satan's angry, uh, angry response at being at his end. He sees his end coming and he's angry and he's going against Christians. So the wrath is coming from Satan. Let's look here in verse 21. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 21. Verse 21. Here we are. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. How do you prove all things? You prove all things by the Bible. Uh, Jesus said in John 17, verse 17, Thy word is truth. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. The word of God is true. So we're going to look at the word of God today. We're going to look at Jesus' own words in Matthew chapter 24. In Matthew chapter 24, let's start in verse 3. And here it says, And as he sat upon the mount of olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? What things? He said the temple would be destroyed in verse 1. And there won't be one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. They wanted to know when that was going to happen. And they wanted to know also what the sign of your coming. Coming back for what? Sign of his coming back to take over the rule of the world. And the end of the world. This word world is age. It's aeon. Greek word aeon means age. So Jesus starts right out of the bat. And he says, And said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Watch out for deceptions. And that's what we have today. We have a lot of people saying a lot of different things. How do you know what's true? For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. You can read that two ways. They're coming in his name, saying that Jesus is the Christ. Or they could be coming in their name and, and saying that they are the Christ. And shall deceive many. Many people are going to be deceived. A deceived person doesn't know he's deceived because if he only knew he was being deceived he would not be deceived does that make sense to you and he gives the warnings here about the wars the reports of wars and nation rising against nation kingdom against kingdom these are groups of nations against groups of nations and he points out there'll be famines, and there are famines today, and pestilences, diseases that cannot be cured, and earthquakes in diverse places. And he's talking here about the intensity of these things. Let me give you an example about the earthquakes. If you took each decade between 1900 and the year 2000, each 10-year period. So between 1901 and 1910, 1911 and 1920, 1921 and 1930, and so forth, you would have between 50 and 60 earthquakes of an intensity of a number six on the Richter scale. Intensity of a number six somewhere between 50 to 60 in each decade. 
This last decade was from 2001 to 2010 was 425 earthquakes took place between in that decade at, on the Richter scale of six or stronger, six or stronger. So it went from 50 to 60 up to 425. Wars went from World War I, uh, 8.3 million people died. World War II, some 62 million people died. And World War III is prophesied that one third of all humanity will die. That's over two billion people dead. So the intensity is so much greater. Now that could never happen around World War II. You could never have that many people killed until we got nuclear weapons. With nuclear weapons, we could wipe out this world with all the nuclear weapons the countries have. This world can be wiped out and 50 other worlds just like it can be destroyed. Wow, that is really something. Let's look at Matthew chapter 24 and let's read what Jesus Christ says in verse 9. Then shall they, they are non-Christians, deliver you, that's Christians, up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Let's drop down to verse 21. For then shall be great tribulation. This is prophesied in the book of Daniel as a three and a half year period, also in the book of Revelation, three and a half year period, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. So it's going to be the worst time that we've ever experienced and except those days should be shortened. There should no flesh be saved. In other words, we would wipe out this entire planet would be wiped out. No flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So the elect are going to be right here on the earth. Who are the elect? The elect are Christians. That's who the elect is. Those days shall be shortened for their sake. They're going to be right here on the earth during this nuclear war that's going to take out over 2 billion people. We'll look at it when we come back. So please don't go away, folks. We got so much more proof about this rapture or secret rapture, whichever you prefer. We'll be right back. Don't go away. workout that I've ever truly loved. Does it show? That's because I'm in the best shape of my life. What a difference Jazzercise makes. When's the last time your workout swept you off your feet? Find a class near you at jazzercise.com. you 
you're looking for a new pet that you can cherish every day, consider adopting from a shelter. Shelters are full of healthy, loyal, fun, loving pets, eager to become a part of your family. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. So bring home your new buddy today. To find out more, you can visit the shelterpetproject.org. Hey, don't touch that dial, because you're watching the only independent TV station here in Las Cruces. The Las Cruces Channel. Keep watching. Welcome back to the program. In case you tuned in late, we're discussing the rapture, or it used to be called the secret rapture. The whole idea is Christ would come and steal away Christians, bringing them up into heaven to protect them uh, during the time of the great tribulation. So they would not have to go through the great tribulation. There are books written on this. The library has shelves that are full of the Left Behind series, which tries to explain this secret rapture as it used to be called. Now, we're trying to show, we're, we're explaining it, that it's not true. Let's go to Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. And here it says, chapter 12, verse 9, and the great, great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. So the whole world is being deceived. Now, you might say, well, I'm not being deceived. How do you know it? A deceived person doesn't know he's being deceived. He was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. So he's coming back to this earth and he's going to cause this great tribulation that's going to take place for three and a half years. Now we're going to turn to Revelation chapter 9. We're coming back to Revelation chapter 9. And we're going to look at verse 18. By these three, these are the three horsemen of the apocalypse, was the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. So the third part of mankind, if there's over six billion people uh, over six and a half billion people, at least 2.2 billion people will lose their lives. This is the greatest war that has ever been. So it talks about an army of 100 million men fighting this war, this third world war. It's going to be horrific. Now we're going to look at Revelation chapter 7. And here it says in verse 1, After these things, now, after what things? Let's read. And said, these people, the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the chief captains, the mighty men, every bondman and every free man, hid themselves in the dens, in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. So this wrath of the Lamb is the wrath of Jesus Christ, and it's going to come on this world after the great tribulation. For the day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand now we have a chapter break here that was not in the original 
There was no original chapters and verses. And after these things, see, the word conjunction, and, which follows this word stand. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. What is he going to do with the seal of the living God? We're going to see as we keep reading. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Well, why do they have to be sealed in their foreheads? Why doesn't Jesus just take them up to heaven and protect them there in heaven? He could rapture them up, couldn't he? Well, he doesn't. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. And of the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 out of each tribe. Well, God did not choose to rapture these people out. He sealed them with a seal on their foreheads. They were protected from the wrath of Jesus Christ, which follows the great tribulation, the three and a half years of great tribulation. Let's go now to 2 Peter chapter 3 in verse 9. 2 Peter 3 verse 9. You know, God is not willing that any should perish. That's not what God's all about. Now, let's read it, start in verse 8. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. God has a lot of patience with people. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but as long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God's, God wants everyone to come to repentance. He doesn't want to punish people. He doesn't want to cause people to die. He wants people to live. He wants them to live for all eternity. He wants them to have everlasting life to have eternal life. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Now here's an area that the people who believe in the rapture try to use to try to prove the to try to prove this rapture. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 Verse 13, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, they're dead, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. So they're laying in their grave, they're dead. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Now, this is what I talked about. If I would stop right here, take it out of context, I, you could say that Jesus is going to bring all the dead with him from heaven. But that's not what he's saying here, because if we read it, verse 15, it explains it. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord 
shall not prevent, that means precede, them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. Did you see that? The Lord himself, not with anyone else, just by himself, shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Okay, so the dead people are dead. They're in their graves. They're coming up out of their graves, and they, they're going to rise first. Then we who are alive, so this is at the resurrection. We're standing there watching the dead go up. We are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Any mention here about heaven? Not yet. To meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wow. We're going to be with the Lord and... We are not going to be raptured. This is a lie. It's a lie straight from hell. Because if you expect to be raptured and you're not raptured, you're going to be disappointed. You're going to quit being a Christian. You're going to give up. So it's a big lie. Well, we have an interactive Bible study every Wednesday at 7 o'clock. And we have also on Saturday at 1 o'clock at the meeting room at 1701 East Missouri. Bring your Bible, your notebook, a pen, bring your questions. We'll be happy to answer them. So every Wednesday at 7 o'clock and every Saturday at 1 o'clock, we have this interactive Bible study. Please come. Please join us. And don't forget these booklets, Just What Do You Mean, you have Born been Again, to what and is Why True Were You Born? With Pastor Meyer Just Stahl, call the number Southern on the New screen, Mexico, Church of we'll God, send them to you free, Cruces, no cost. New Mexico. Until for next time, of today's lesson, this is Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God, saying goodbye, my friends. That's 575-650-7359. Join us next week at this same time for another edition of What is Truth? Until next week, we wish you God's richest blessings.